Hello, and welcome to Dr. Ozello Sports Medicine Report. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. On today's episode, I'm going to speak about pain in the anterior rib cage, right where the ribs meet the sternum. This can be either costal chondritis or Tietze's syndrome. Again, this is going to cover both conditions, costal chondritis and Tietze's syndrome. Localized pain in the costochondral joints or the costal sternal joints is typically associated with costochondritis or Tietze's syndrome. Both conditions have a higher prevalence in females in the general population and in the athletic population. In any type of chest pain, a serious pathology must be ruled out first. Again, in any type of chest pain, pain or ribcage pain, a serious pathology must be ruled out first. Costochondritis and Tietze syndrome are similar, except costochondritis exists without swelling, heat, or redness. Let me repeat that. Costochondritis and Tietze syndrome are very similar, except costochondritis exists without swelling, heat, or redness. Tietze syndrome is usually associated with the second or third costal cartilages unilaterally, meaning it exists only on one side. Ultrasound has proven to be effective to assist in the diagnosis of Tietze syndrome as it can quickly demonstrate soft tissue swelling at the site of inflammation. Costal chondritis is associated with multiple ribs ranging from two to five ribs and is not associated with localized swelling over the affected joints. In costochondritis and Tietze's syndrome, pain can be provoked with upper extremity movements, especially shoulder adduction. Shoulder adduction is the motion where the arm is moved across the chest. Pain will also typically be worse when taking a deep breath and is often aggravated by coughing, sneezing, and vomiting. Pain is usually described as sharp or dull, and this is a recurrent and persistent condition. For both conditions, there is no known etiology, and both have an insidious onset. Costochondritis proposed mechanism of injury include pull of the surrounding muscles, repetitive arm adduction, and hypomobility of the posterior spinal structures, specifically in the thoracic spine and where the thoracic spine articulates with the ribs. Costochondritis is thought of as a self-limiting condition, allowing individuals to continue activity as symptoms allow. Altered thoracic spine and rib mobility may be a factor associated with the development of costochondritis. Possibility of a thoracic spine disc herniation or bulge exist with all types of pain in the rib cage. Recent clinical suggestions and case studies have included use of manual therapy interventions including chiropractic care and massage directed at the thoracic spine in management of rib and rib cage injuries. Rib and associated thoracic vertebral segment can be described as a fixed ring. Movement and stress applied at one part can be transmitted throughout the entire ring. Therefore, if there is an issue in the thoracic spine where a vertebrae articulates with a rib, that can cause symptoms throughout the entire rib, wrapping all the way around to the side and to the front. Disclaimer alert! Disclaimer alert! Viewing this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. Please see a medical professional if you think you have costochondritis or Tietze's syndrome. First of all, you want to rule out a serious pathology located inside the rib cage. This could be a heart pathology or a lung pathology. You want to rule out a serious pathology. So please see a medical professional. Once you have seen a medical professional and the serious pathology has been ruled out, you can see a doctor of chiropractic to get an evaluation, a diagnosis, and a treatment plan. If you are performing exercises to prevent and rehabilitate costochondritis or Tietze syndrome or any other type of condition, 
always perform these exercises through a symptom-free range of motion, even if that range of motion is very small. Never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. Always start a training program at your current health, fitness, and strength level. Do not start at a level that you used to be able to use. Start at your current strength, health, and fitness level. And always increase the intensity and the volume of your training in small, gradual, calculated increments. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have treated numerous cases of costeochondritis and Tietze syndrome in my office. Both of these conditions are painful and performance limiting conditions. So if you feel that you have either of these conditions, please see a doctor of chiropractic. I will do an evaluation. I would do a report of findings where I explain everything, give the patient the proper diagnosis, and then set up a treatment plan. The treatment plan will consist of a chiropractic adjustment. The adjustment is the restoration of proper skeletal motion, which will help to optimize nerve flow. The restoration of proper skeletal motion in the thoracic spine and in the rib cage, and the optimization of nerve flow in those areas may help to remove the source of costeochondritis and Tietze's syndrome. If you are diagnosed with costochondritis or with TT syndrome, please develop a training program where you are strengthening the scapular retractor muscles. These muscles are the rhomboid major, the rhomboid minor, the middle trapezius, and the lower trapezius. You can also practice normal breathing. This will help to strengthen the diaphragm and put less stress on the rib cage. You can perform slow static stretches for the chest muscles and the anterior rib cage muscles. You can perform this in a supine position or in a standing position. You can also perform them laying on a fit ball or laying supine on a foam roller. But stretching the chest muscles combined with strengthening of the scapular retractor muscles and performing normal breathing exercises will help to strengthen the rib cage. Thank you everyone for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozella Sports Medicine Report where I covered costochondritis and Tietze's syndrome. Again, prevention is imperative with all injuries. But if you are diagnosed with costochondritis or Tietze's syndrome, practice your normal breathing, stretch the chest muscles and strengthen the scapular retractor muscles. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You can go to my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book and you can also find my blog. My blog contains articles on chiropractic care, spine health, sports medicine, nutrition, health, and fitness. Please feel free to like this video. If you have questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them in the comments section below. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube page. And always remember to train hard, but train smart. Get adequate rest between your training sessions. Utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you. Stay injury-free. Rehabilitate your injuries and accomplish your